Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, and thank you for joining today's NAD PRP 2021 Funding Opportunity Information for Applicants webinar. Before we begin, please ensure that you have opened the WebEx participant and chat panels by using the associated icons located at the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Please note, all audio connections are currently muted and this conference is being recorded. You are welcome to submit written questions throughout the webinar, which will be addressed at the Q&A session of the webinar. To submit a written question, select all panelists from the drop-down menu in the chat panel, then enter your question in the message box provided and send. If you require technical assistance, please send a chat to the event producer. With that, I will turn the webinar over to Julie Wallen, Project Coordinator for USDA Veterinary Services Farmville Program. Julie, please go ahead. Thanks, good, thanks Michelle. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're happy to be here today to tell you about the upcoming NAD Prep funding opportunity. So I'm Julie Wallen, the coordinator for APHIS Veterinary Services Farm Bill Programs, and I have with me today Melinda Springer, who is our management analyst, and also Laura Wilson and Andrea Pegg, who are our grant specialists. And we're going to tell you everything that you need to know to apply for this funding opportunity. So just by way of a little bit of background, um, in the 2018 Farm Bill, Congress provided funding for a three-tier program to support the nation's animal disease prevention and management efforts, and that includes the National Animal Disease Preparedness and Response Program, or NADPREP, which is what we're going to talk about today. And it also provided funding to support the National Animal Health Laboratory Network, or NALM, and funding to create a new National Animal Vaccine and Veterinary Countermeasures Bank. So each year, APHIS Veterinary Services provides competitive funding opportunities in the NAD Prep and NALM programs. And this year, we're actually offering three different funding opportunities. The 2021 NAD Prep funding opportunity, which is what we're focused on today, and also this year's NALM funding opportunity. And unique uh, for this year is this new joint NALM and NAD Prep cross program funding opportunity. And this third one is focused on supporting projects that are aimed at developing and validating point-of-care diagnostic tests for rapid detection of foreign animal diseases. So um, there's information on all three funding opportunities on the NAB Prep website, and we'll be providing you that link later on today. And we're also providing a specific webinar on the joint funding opportunity tomorrow afternoon. But today, we are just focused on the 2021 NAB Prep funding opportunity. So um, I'm going to give a little bit of intro, uh, background information about the funding opportunity and this year's funding priorities. And then Laura Wilson is going to talk, step you through the process for how you apply, where you find all your application information, um, and what you need to submit. And Melinda is going to wrap it up for us by um, giving some explanation about what happens after you submit a proposal, things that you should think about um, when you're writing your proposal. And then we have plenty of time set aside for a Q&A session at the end. So I want to tell you a little bit specifically about the National Animal Disease Preparedness and Response Program. Um, and this is a program where APHIS provides funding to support high-value projects to prevent the introduction and spread of FADs and emerging diseases that most threaten U.S. agriculture. And there's a few unique features about the program. We generally provide the funding uh, through cooperative agreements to our cooperators. Um, it's a competitive funding process. There are a large number of eligible entity types. And because it's know your money, we're able to provide funding to projects that last more than a year. And typically, a NAD prep project will last about one year, or two years, pardon me. <laughs> um, so in terms of who is eligible to, to apply, uh, APHIS can enter into cooperative agreements with on these different types of eligible entities that include states, and that includes state departments of ag, state animal health officials, and state emergency agencies. We can also enter into agreements with land-grant universities and colleges of veterinary medicine. Uh, veterinary organizations are also eligible to apply, 
as our national or regional um, state, uh, sorry, livestock, poultry, and aquaculture producer organizations and Indian tribes and also other federal agencies. So you'll notice on the slide that private individuals and private businesses are not listed as eligible entities. I mean, they are not, they are not allowed to directly apply for funding, but they can enter um, and work in cooperation or partnership with these eligible entities and be part of a NAB prep funded project in that way. So this is just a quick overview of our annual cycle of activity in the NAD prep program. Each year we work with stakeholders to identify specific funding priority areas for that year of funding. And then we um, issue an open period where we um, accept proposals. And then we review those proposals. We have an approval process. Um, and a few months down the road after that, we are awarding the funds, standing up the new projects, getting them started, and entering into the monitoring and reporting phase. So right now, um, we're at the open period for 2021, um, and this is a 60-day open window when those eligible entities are invited to submit proposals. And as you'll see us say several times throughout our presentation today, the application packages are due by August 6th. So just so some general information about the funding opportunity at a high level. Um, in this funding opportunity, APHIS will award up to $10 million in funds to high-value projects. The proposals should directly support one of our 2021 funding priorities that I'm going to describe for you. Um, individual applicants can submit multiple proposals, and the review process is competitive, and USDA makes all the final decisions. Um, we expect that individual awards can range anywhere from $25,000 to $500,000. An average NAB prep award is about $170,000. We expect that projects will start between mid-January and early March of 2022, but there is some flexibility with this. We are able to start projects sooner or later on the specific circumstances need to be met. We do expect projects to be completed in 24 months or less, and because this is Farm Bill funding and we have accountability to Congress, we have some pretty strict reporting requirements um, in terms of quarterly performance reports and financial reports. So I want to tell you a little bit about the funding priorities. Um, as I said earlier, your, any funding proposal submitted should be related to these funding priorities. So this year we're looking to aim NAD prep funding towards projects that will develop or enhance state and tribal foreign animal disease vaccination plans that will help improve animal disease outbreak response capabilities. The second funding priority area is projects that will support animal movement decisions in an FAD outbreak. And the third area is projects that will strengthen outreach and education on, outreach and education on animal disease prevention, preparedness, and response to specific audiences. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about each one of these. So the first one is focused on developing or enhancing vaccination plans at state or tribal levels. And um, in this area, APHIS is looking to support projects that will develop or improve foreign animal, animal disease vaccination strategies and plans that are realistic, adaptable to different situations, and that align with USDA plans and our national guidelines, as well as are able to be coordinated with the vaccination plans from other states or tribes. So specifically, and um, I will say that all of this is listed in the funding opportunity announcement that's on our website. We go into a lot of detail in the documents, the guidance documents we put on our website to describe the specific funding priorities. But what we're looking for in particular in this first funding priority is projects that focus on developing and improving those FAD vaccination plans, um, providing training and exercises, that will increase the ability to implement those plans and help us improve vaccination plans. And that includes also just-in-time training to address logistics and the biosecurity of implementing vaccine plans and administering vaccines on premises. We also um, would be interested in funding projects that are looking at collating and sharing information from exercises of vaccination plans so that the lessons learned from those exercises can be readily shared with different stakeholders. 
And lastly, we're looking also for projects that will focus on developing and testing strategies to identify, track, and manage vaccinated, vaccinated animals when a vaccine strategy is used as an outbreak response tool. So the second funding priority area is related to projects that will support livestock movement decisions in a foreign animal disease outbreak. And what we're specifically looking for here are projects that enhance the ability of states or tribes to implement nationally consistent decisions on risk and on the movement of animals in an outbreak. So this might include projects that develop stand standardized criteria or develop standards for sharing information and sharing data um, in order to move animals in an FAD outbreak. Um, projects might also include exercises that help us um, practice the coordination of transporting and moving animals in an outbreak in accordance with secure food supply plans. Um, it might also look at developing and exercising regional plans to support animal movement decisions. And then we're also looking at projects that look at cleaning and disinfection of trucks and trailers and other transportation assets that would be needed to move animals in an outbreak, especially um, how to clean and disinfect those transportation assets in different weather conditions, like extreme cold or extreme heat. Um, we also, in this category, are looking for projects that will identify and recommend biosecurity practices that would help eliminate or minimize um, the, FA, the chance of FAD spreading through trucks and trailers, and also projects that could look at the risk of spreading FADs through trucks and trailers and the impact of cleaning and disinfection measures to minimize that risk or the impact of biosecurity measures to impact that risk or reduce it. So the third funding priority topic, um, the third area where we're interested in funding projects is projects that will strengthen outreach and education on animal disease prevention, preparedness, and response areas to specific audiences. And those audiences can include, but they're not limited to, um, underserved producers, non-traditional, small to mid-sized producers, and producers on Indian tribes. So in this area, um, the details are we're looking for projects that address known information gaps in those audiences related to areas of animal disease prevention, biosecurity, um, things like early disease recognition and reporting, and also projects that might address gaps in activities that are essential in an outbreak response and the roles and responsibilities that are um, allocated to different kinds of entities in a foreign animal disease outbreak response in a state or region. We're also looking to in particular to fund projects that will leverage existing educational materials and also leverage existing ag extension networks and deliver that outreach and education and training on preparedness and response topics. And lastly, um, we're interested in projects that might foster a better understanding among producers on different types of operations within a similar region or area on their roles and responsibilities in an animal disease outbreak. So those are these are some of the target areas where we're looking to focus the funding this year. So regardless of where your proposal might fall, the NADPREP program is always looking for proposals that address significant known gaps um, and that also focus on underserved audiences, hard to reach audiences, and small to medium sized producers. We also um, really like to see project proposals that build on existing knowledge, build on existing successful projects or studies so that we can sort of see the growth in a particular area. Um, we also favor projects that leverage partnerships, for example, among um, livestock or veterinary organizations or the projects that cut across state and federal partnerships or show that kind of um, relationship in a public-private partnership sort of way. And lastly, we're looking for um, an array of projects that will support a variety of different livestock industry sectors and address the needs of different operation sizes. So these are just things to really keep in mind as you develop a NAB prep project proposal. So um, again, just keep in mind uh, these funding priority targets as you develop your, pri your proposal for submission. And if you um, want to 
a little bit more detail about those. As I said, these are all um, written out with additional information in our funding opportunity announcement that's on our website. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Laura Wilson. Laura's gonna tell you all um, more about the specifics of how to apply for an ad prep funds and how to submit your application package. So Laura? Great, thanks Julie. USDA uses a system called EasyFed Grants to manage cooperative agreements and grants. If you think you will ever apply for any fund, farm bill funding, we strongly encourage you to do the following pre-work now to avoid any obstacles or delays during the application process. First, if you don't already have a DUNS number, you can apply for one on the Dun & Bradstreet website link provided on this slide. Second, you should be sure to register for a SAM account. This process could take up to two weeks for your account to show up in federal systems, which is why we encourage these steps to be taken ahead of time. Also, please note there's a new mandatory requirement in addition to registering with SAM, which is to complete the financial assistance certification report. Once you've completed those steps, you then have the information you need to create an e-authentication account. The last step is then to establish an EasyFed grants account to be able to apply for the opportunity. Non-federal applicants must submit your application using the EasyFed grants system. This slide contains links with resources to assist in learning the EasyFed grants system. For federal applicants, you must submit your application via email to the NADPREP mailbox. When submitting application attachments, please refer to the Funding Opportunity Announcement, Appendix 2 and 3, Application Checklist and Tips for further information. Requesting access to EV-Fed grants requires a few prior steps as mentioned on slide 22. The first step for requesting access is to have a USDA Level 2 e-authentication account. And second is to then request the access to EasyFed grants. The links on this slide are job aids and other resources for additional assistance with obtaining access. Please refer to the Funding Opportunity Announcement Appendix 1, New Applicant Information, for tips and active links for getting started in EasyFed grants. I'm now going to talk about what to include in an application. For all applicants, the required documents to be included in an application package are the work plan and financial plan and the standard forms 424 and 424A. The work plan and financial plan templates are strongly encouraged to be used and they can be found on the NADPREP website. For award proposals that are greater than $100,000, two additional forms are required. Those forms are the certification regarding lobbying and the disclosure of lobbying activities. For award proposals claiming indirect costs, then a copy of your current and fully signed negotiated indirect cost rate agreement must be submitted. Lastly, for those states that require the single point of contact correspondence, a copy of that letter or waiver of review must be attached. All forms can be found on the NAPREP website. A little more about the single point of contact or SPOC for short uh, review process, which is called the Intergovernmental Review of Federal Programs, Executive Order 12372. The letter or email from the SPOC is required as part of the application package. There's an active link to the right on this slide, which will pull up the list of states that are participating in the contact person. Also remember that on the application for federal funding standard form 424, item 19, a selection of A or B is required, which is shown here in this picture on this slide. As mentioned earlier, the work plan template can be found on the NETPREP website. We strongly encourage that the template be used. The work plan is the body of your proposal and the template gives detailed instructions for all the required information to include in your work plan. If the template is not used, all information requested in the template must still be included with the proposal. The financial plan 
the template can also be found on the NET Prep website. The template's an Excel file and really steps you through how to lay out your budget. The work plan objectives should align with the financial plan, as well as keeping in mind that the cost categories or budget categories will need to match up to the standard form 424A. I'm now going to go over a few general guidelines for using that prep fund. This is a list of the most common allowable costs. More details and definitions of each item can be found in the notes section of this presentation or in the guidelines for use of funds document posted on the NAT prep website. In general, when trying to decide if a cost might be allowable or not, it should be reasonable, allocable, and necessary for the project completion. Keep in mind that although an item may be listed as allowable, it must still be reviewed and approved by APHIS. This is a list of the most common unallowable costs. Again, more details and definitions of each item listed can be found in the notes section of this presentation or in the guidelines for use of funds document on the NAVPREP website. If you have specific items that are questionable, please be sure to reach out to APHIS to discuss further. Indirect costs or facilities and administrative costs. These are costs incurred for a common or joint purpose benefiting more than one cost objective. Applicants may charge their negotiated indirect cost rate to the applicable base or 10% of total direct costs, whichever is lower. Please see the notes section of this presentation for examples on how this applies to projects. An applicant must submit a current fully executed negotiated indirect cost rate agreement when indirect costs are assessed in the budget. If APHIS does not receive that agreement, then no indirect costs can be claimed. Cost sharing or matching. There is no required cost sharing or matching for the NADPREP cooperative agreement. If a recipient does include cost sharing in their budget and it is accepted by APHIS, then the commitment of funds becomes legally binding and must be reported on the standard form 425. To sum up the guidelines for using that prep funds, all costs in a work plan must be reasonable, necessary to the project goals, and should leverage existing recipient resources, such as personnel, vehicles, and computers, where possible to achieve cost effectiveness. So while sending your project team to Hawaii may sound like a fantastic idea, it's probably not reasonable. I'm now gonna turn it over to Melinda to discuss what happens after you submit your proposal. Thanks, Laura. Um, and like, like Laura told you, I'm going to be talking to you next about what happens after we submit a after you submit a proposal. Oh, I'm just trying to get the slides to advance. Okay, there we go. The NAPCRAP funding cycle includes a proposal review phase, where submitted proposals are reviewed and scored, and this takes about 60 days. An approval phase, this is when the review team's funding recommendations are routed for USDA approval. And an award phase, this is when VS notifies applicants of proposal status and funding levels and starts to stand up awards. These phases of the process begin after the open period ends. Now let's take a closer look at the review process phase. The review process consists of an initial screening to confirm that proposals meet minimum eligibility requirements for review. Once eligibility is confirmed, proposal, proposals are presented to a team for review, scoring, and ranking. The review team includes external experts who are nominated by the NACSEP consultation board as well as experts from within veterinary services. All reviewers are considered subject matter experts in one or more of the priority areas. The reviewers use standardized criteria, criteria for scoring proposals, and through this process, they develop their recommendations regarding which proposals to fund and at what level. These recommendations are presented to USDA for final approval. When USDA approval is obtained, 
notifications begin, applicants are notified of the status of their application through email. VS releases the secretary's approved spending plan via stakeholder announcement, and funded projects are posted to the NAVPREF website. Proposals will be evaluated based on these six criteria. Applicants should explicitly address these criteria and project work plans. Number one, alignment with funding priority topics. This should be made clear in the work plan. Projects with strong, clear, and direct support for the priority score much higher during the review process. Two, how well the project addresses certain criteria needed directly, sorry, addresses certain critical needs directly related to the funding opportunity topics, or identifies important gaps in knowledge or capabilities directly related to the funding priority topics. Three, feasibility of success demonstrated by a well-organized approach, a reasonable timeline, consideration of key partnerships needed for the project success, and the skills and expertise of the applicant. Four, project outcomes, impact and value to stakeholders in funding priority areas. For example, a project could produce critically needed deliverables, impact a large geographic area, or impact one or more livestock sectors. And five, cost effectiveness. Are proposed costs reasonable and necessary to produce expected outcomes? Does the proposal make good use of existing resources? And six, best practice, practices or innovative approaches used to accomplish the project objectives. This timeline, these timeline dates are important and should be noted. August 6, 2021 at 11.59 Eastern Standard Time is when the open period for submitting proposal ends. Applications submitted after this time will not be considered for funding. And early November 2021, this is when DS expects to announce award awarded projects. Here are a few tips from the NAPREP staff. Be sure to carefully review the funding opportunity the information in there will help you prepare a successful application. Keep in mind the criteria the reviewers will use to score proposals. Clear objectives are essential to your proposal and ties all the activities together. A good executive summary goes a long way. It's reviewed and often referenced during the review process. A well-written summary not only increases your chances of project success, but can also help improve your scores during the review process. Next is a summary of the key points to consider. The review team's job is to ensure federal funds are well spent. So keep that in mind when developing your work plan. Funded proposals represent high value projects with tangible outcomes. Well-written and easy to follow proposals tend to yield a higher score during the review process. And most importantly, don't wait until the last minute. We all encounter unforeseen issues from time to time and waiting until the last minute could mean missing the deadline if you run into hiccups. And for those who want additional help, we'll be posting a webinar recording to the NAPREP website on tips for writing a successful NAPREP proposal. This webinar will be available on our website after July 1st. As we wrap up the presentation, I want to take a minute to provide some resource and contact information before we take questions. All of the information covered today and more is available on the NAVPREP website. In the next few days, we'll post today's webinar recording and slides on the website for you to access. If you don't find the answers that you're looking for on our website, please send us an email using our NAVPREP email that's displayed on the screen right now. For specific issues related to EasyFed grant access or locked accounts due to inactivity, please email the EasyFed grant help desk directly, and their email address is also on screen. 
for current EasyFed grant, grant account holders, we recommend that you log in to EasyFed Grant now to verify your access. This will allow time to fix your access issues well before the application deadline of August 6th. So once again, I know you've heard this a bunch, but this is so important. The application deadline is August 6th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Only proposals submitted by this deadline will be considered for funding. There are no exceptions. So it's important to get those proposals in on time. So I want to thank you guys for joining us today. At this time, we would like to open the floor for questions. You may ask verbally or enter your question, questions into the chat box. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question via phone, please press pound two on your telephone keypad to be entered into the question queue. Once again, pound two will enter you into the verbal question queue. And this is Julie again. Thanks, Laura and Melinda. You did a really nice job. And any question is welcome. Um, probably it's going through the minds of others. And we really encourage questions, especially if you're a new applicant um, and you haven't submitted a proposal to the NAD prep program before. Oh, I do not see any questions on the line. Okay. okay, I guess if, if yeah, you don't go have ahead any questions. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, yes, again, so I'd like, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. And then I'm gonna turn things back over to, to Julie Wallen, our program coordinator for VS Farm Bill for any final thoughts or closing comments. Julie, take it away. Thank you. And thanks everybody for attending today's webinar. We really look forward to seeing your proposals and as Melinda went over, we have a wealth of information on our NAD prep website, so we really encourage you to go there, look at the different guidance documents and the official uh, funding opportunity announcement and supporting items that are out there to help you with your application process. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at that vs.nadprep at usda.gov email address. So we wish you the best of luck in preparing your proposals and um, we look forward to working with you. So thanks very much for your time today. That concludes our conference. Thank you for using event services. You may now disconnect.